guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect an app to a Firebase database. We are going to start with an empty project as usual, and we're using API 16 with all the default settings. Once you have that set up, head over to console.firebase.google.com and we're going to create a project. I named my project Mass Quiz. You're going to be brought to this screen and click on Add Firebase to your Android app. You will need to enter your package name and your SHA-1 fingerprint. You can find your package name inside of your manifest. The SHA-1 is unique to your machine, but you can find it by running the command provided in the description in your Android Studio terminal. You are provided with a JSON configuration file. Switch to your project view in Android Studio and add that file to your app folder. You will notice that my file has a dash 2 suffix and this will cause problems later on. Modify your project and app Gradle files so that we can use the JSON plugin. Once this is completed, sync the project files. This will cause an error because I have to remove the dash 2. We need to add some more dependencies. We need to add Firebase Database and Firebase Client for Android. Our app will need to access the internet we can add this permission inside of the manifest. Next, we need to create a class. I called my class MathQuiz and it extends application. Hit enter to add the import statement and hit control O to select the onCreate method. Then type firebase.setAndroidContext to this and in your manifest, you need to add dot mass quiz to your application. It's good practice to test your app at regular intervals to see if it's working. The error says that I have duplicate files copied in my meta-inf license. At this point, I had no idea what this problem was or how to fix it. So I googled the problem and Google took me to Stack Overflow. And the Stack Overflow community told me to add these lines to my app.gradle file. At this point, I don't want to waste time creating the layout. I showed you how to create the layout in the previous tutorial, 
I'm just going to copy the layout from the previous tutorial which can be obtained from my GitHub page. And I'm going to tweak it a bit. We're going to need some member variables, two text views, one for the score and the next one for the question, four buttons for each choice, an integer to hold the score, a string to hold the answer, and a Firebase client to hold references to our question, choices, and answer. We need to connect the variables that we created to the views in our layout. And we do this inside of the onCreate method. At this point, I'm going to create a method to update the questions outside of our onCreate method. I'm going to jump over to Google Sheets real quick to show you that there's a script that allows you to export a spreadsheet as a JSON file. The data inside our Firebase database is stored as a JSON file. Once you have that JSON file, you can open it inside a text editor and save it with the .json extension then all you need to do is upload it to Firebase. On your Firebase start page, click on the tab that says Database. From the pop-out menu, select Import JSON. In order to read from the database, click on Rules and set Read to True. You will need to copy that URL. Each quiz item will have a unique URL. The first question item will be at position 0. So the URL will have 0 forward slash question. We add a value event listener and in parentheses start to type new value event listener and hit enter. Code completion should provide you with two methods, on data change and on cancelled. Inside the first method, we are going to create a string variable called question and set that to data snapshot value and in parentheses type string dot class. Under that, we can use the set text method to set the question text to the value stored in our variable question. Now let's run the app and if it works, the first question should be 
how many right angles are in a square. I'm going to type similar code for the buttons, but when I get to the answer, I will store it in the member variable mAnswer, which was created earlier. Then I will run the app to see if the buttons update. You will notice that these URLs all contain zero. This zero can be replaced with a variable and we can use concatenation. Now let's call this variable m question number. So when we update that variable is going to update the question, the choices and the answer. The last thing that we need to do is add our button on click listeners. I explained the logic in the last tutorial. The only difference is this time I used the method dot equals to compare the button text to the text stored in the answer variable. <laughs> If you enjoyed this tutorial or the music, don't be afraid to hit that like button. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.